Okay, yeah, we need to talk about this. Gaming emulation has always been a hot topic in the gaming industry, but it has reached a focal point recently within the last week or so. In regards to a lawsuit that Nintendo filed against the Nintendo Switch emulator, Yuzu. Now, disclaimer before we go on here. I am not a legal expert, okay? This is a blanket statement for the rest of this video, so I don't have to repeat this a million freaking times. But needless to say, I'm a bit ticked. And I really don't like the logic being used here, or the possible precedent that this may set. Now, it's important to understand what's going on here. Yuzu is a Nintendo Switch emulator. And to avoid any possible bias, let's read the definition for a video game console emulator from the Wikipedia page. A video game console emulator is a type of emulator that I'll, okay, fair enough, is a, that allows a computing device to emulate a video game's console's hardware and play its games on the emulating platform. More often than not, emulators carry additional features that surpass limitations of the original hardware, such as broader controller compatibility, timescale control, easier access to memory modifications, like GameShock, and unlocking of gameplay features. Basically, a way to play the game on hardware that it wasn't initially designed for. So, Yuzu was an emulator for the Nintendo Switch that allowed you to play Nintendo Switch games on your PC, and to utilize the power of your PC to run the game at either higher fidelity, resolution, or even frame rate than what could be provided on the Nintendo Switch. Link in the description to the Wikipedia article. So, what's up with Yuzu? Because Nintendo sent their lawyers after them, and they've reached a settlement that essentially amounts to 2.4 million damages by Yuzu to Nintendo, 2.4 million dollars. Yuzu will have to essentially cease operations and hand over the domain to Nintendo. Shoutouts to Steven Tortillo on Twitter for having some of the screenshots from the actual court document, which I again will leave a link to his Twitter thread in the description down below. But here is where we come upon the part that really kind of irks me. Let's read this page from the court document. Yuzu, a video game emulator, circumvents the technological measures and allows for the play of encrypted Nintendo Switch games on devices other than the Nintendo Switch. For example, Yuzu executes code that decrypts Nintendo Switch video games, including component files, immediately before and during runtime using unauthorized copies of Nintendo Switch cryptographic keys. Users primarily designed to circumvent and play Nintendo Switch games. In the ordinary course of its operation with those games, Yuzu requires the Nintendo Switch's proprietary cryptographic keys to gain access to and play Nintendo Switch games. Developing or distributing software, including Yuzu, that in its ordinary course functions only when cryptographic keys are integrated without authorization, violates the Digital Millennium Copyright Act's prohibition on trafficking in devices that circumvent effective technological measures because the software is primarily designed for the purpose of circumventing technological measures. Now again, I am not a court legal expert or whatever, but from the sounds of that, it sounds like the issue that Nintendo raised in regards to Yuzu specifically is that Yuzu circumvents these cryptographic keys that are needed to play an actual Nintendo Switch game, not necessarily the fact that Yuzu can play a Nintendo Switch game. And it seems like Nintendo's grape here is extremely specific and honed in on this singular principle, because to my knowledge, the actual act of emulation is not illegal in the United States. So this would have to be the route that Nintendo would have to go through if they wanted to shut this down. Now, to my knowledge, this is a settlement that didn't go to court. And because of that, this wouldn't operate as actual legal precedent going into the future. I could be wrong there, correct me if I am, but that's my personal understanding. And then Yuzu on Twitter put out a statement that reads the following. Hello, Yuzers and Citra fans. We write today to inform you that Yuzu and Yuzu's support of Citra are being discontinued effective immediately. Yuzu and its team have always been against piracy. We started the projects in good faith out of passion for Nintendo and its consoles and games, and we're not intending to cause harm. But we see now that because our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware, they have led to extensive piracy. In particular, we have been deeply disappointed when users have used our software to leak game content prior to its release and ruin the experience for legitimate purchasers and fans. We have come to the decision that we cannot continue to allow this to occur. 
Piracy was never our intention, and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end. Effective today, we will be pulling our code repositories offline, discontinuing our Patreon accounts and Discord servers, and soon shutting down our websites. We hope our actions will be a small step toward ending piracy of all creators' works. Thank you for your years of support and for understanding our decision. This is where I have my issue. This is my own personal observation. This reads to me as if it was clearly and obviously written to basically appease Nintendo. Because the actual logic held within this is faulty at best. Specifically the language that, but we can see now that because our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware, they have led to extensive piracy. I don't know what it is that makes video games so special, or digital media so special, that just because something can be used for illegal practice, that somehow makes the actual thing itself illegal and faulty. What, just because it has the capability to, that means the whole thing has to be thrown away? What kind of logic are we operating here? Because if we want to extend that logic just to overall PCs, do they fall in line with this? Because you can use a PC to technically circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware. To me, this is nothing more than a culmination of years of effort by the video games industry en masse to try and remove the concept of ownership from the video games medium. If I own something, it should not be up to the whims of the copyright owner to tell me what I can and cannot do with something that I own. Which is why we see a whole bunch of legalese be slipped into a lot of EULAs online and for video game storefronts to where you don't actually own the game anymore, you are merely, own, you are merely rented a license to be able to play the game. The concept of video game ownership is a dying one, unfortunately. And this settlement utilizes that aspect and is a grim reminder of the current state of the video games industry. I don't personally emulate. I don't use Yuzu. I've never used Yuzu. I never looked that much into Yuzu, personally. But I don't have to personally have a stake in something to understand the possible ramifications that this could set in the future. And I think a lot of people in the emulation game are breathing a sigh of relief that this is a settlement that this didn't actually go to court and that this specific logic didn't end up becoming precedent. At least to my knowledge. Because I'm certain that Yuzu could have argued, how do you define primarily designed to circumvent and play Nintendo Switch games? How do you define that word primarily there? And how do you prove that in a court of law? They could have argued that front, but do they want to pay the legal fees? And I think everyone saw this coming when this court case initially came out, that Nintendo just wanted to squeeze Yuzu of money here and kind of force them to go this route. And it's a shame that it ended up going this route. This is a common tactic many large corporations utilize to effectively extend their will even in a court case that seems dubious and flimsy at best because you can just bury your opposition in legal paperwork and legal fees and lawyer fees and just keep delaying. Take a knee, run out the clock because you have more money than them. Even if you're in a losing position, if you turn into a war of attrition, you can come out on top. And that seemingly is what Nintendo was banking on here and Yuzu agreed we cannot go to a lengthy court case in regards to this, we just won't have enough resources to can combat what Nintendo could throw at us. That's what this reads to me. But the video games industry and the console industry as well, this isn't just a PC thing that a lot of people like to throw about. The console industry has been infected by this as well. You have DRM be inserted into these games and these experiences as essentially a wall to prevent you from actually owning a game. From being able to utilize what you want with your own copy of a game to whatever ends or means you want. You have to abide and operate within the confines of what my corporation wants you to do with that piece of software or that game. And in this case, Nintendo only wants you to play Nintendo Switch games on a Nintendo Switch. You don't actually own the game, you don't actually own the files because they're locked inside a wall of DIM, a proverbial wall. This is woefully and tragically anti-consumer in its finest light. This is a sad day for the video games industry and a sad day for video games preservation. And for me, intent matters. They are on the cusp and the precipice of announcing a new console, in all likelihood, the Nintendo Switch 2. They've had the entire 
switch duration to do something in regards to Yuzu, but they chose now. Yuzu's been around for a while. It's been around for a long time. They chose to do it now, when all the rumor going around is that they're about to announce their new console. So don't try and tickle my chin and pretend as if this was done on behalf of the consumer. In regards to the Yuzu statement that was put out, in particular, we have been deeply disappointed when users have used our software to leak game content prior to its release and ruin the experience for legitimate purchasers and fans. Don't try and pretend as if this was done on behalf of the consumer and for the consumer's well-being and quality of life. Don't do that. This was done because of corporate greed. And the wild thing is that there will be people that actually defend this. Because the console wars is a brain rot of epic proportions. Where people doggedly curl up at the feet of my corporation because of the plastic box that they feel they need to continually justify to themselves that they purchased. Name me one way that this benefits the consumer. One. And yeah, leaks suck before someone wants to go but actually leaking. But you can also just avoid it. Let's not pretend as if that this is some like noble cause. It's another representation and reminder that game preservation in the modern day of 2024 for modern video games is in a dire state. And that these companies solely want the ability to determine when and how you can play their games. Irregardless of if you already bought the game. Because if you did, you still don't own it. Because we have layers of DRM installed here to make sure that you have to buy our own hardware to play our own software. This is the thing that also baffles me in regards to the video games industry. How this has become so normalized. Because where else in media does it actually operate like this? If I buy a DVD, I don't have to buy a specific DVD player to play that DVD on because it's hardware patented. Same thing with Blu-ray. I just need to make sure that the thing is Blu-ray compatible or DVD compatible. Same thing like old MP3s back in the day. You just need an MP3 player. You don't actually need a specific one. That's not how it should work. But it does for the video games industry. It's a sad state of affairs. But do we expect better from Nintendo? Not really. This is merely another reminder as to why I have become so disillusioned with the console industry at large. The actual benefits that it used to tout just no longer apply in the modern games industry. You don't own your games, even if they're physical. Because chances are, you're gonna need to download a big patch for that game, aren't you? Even day one. And they want to take the concept of ownership away from you, the consumer, and put the ball solely in their court. So that they have all the cards, that they have all the power. I don't blame Yuzu for not trying to take this in the long haul and, and go to a lengthy court case. I don't blame them at all for that, because it would have been super costly for them. And all things considered, this is probably the best way out for them. And it sucks that this is their best case scenario. It just does. But if there's a silver lining here at all, well, at least this, this, this didn't become legal precedent. I at least believe so. But where is the industry going to go from here? Well, let's be fair and let's be honest here. Yuzu's out in the wild. Yeah, they can like take it off all they want, but it's out in the wild. And let's not, like, try and believe that reality doesn't exist here. There's gonna be some sweaty nerd out there that locks themselves in a room for a weekend or a week or whatever and comes up with another emulator of the functionality of Yuzu. Maybe it's not as good as Yuzu initially, but over time, I imagine some emulator will come out along that line. And then maybe Nintendo will try and go after them. But welcome to the internet, another one is always bound to pop up. Dude, it's kind of funny to me how I couldn't even go a full 24 hours after making one video remotely positive about Nintendo with the Nintendo Switch's legacy I made, I talked about, and then this happens. I swear to God, I didn't time this. But yeah, it's a sad state of affairs. Another example of a big corporation wanting to make sure that they have all the power and the money in their corner and to try and take it away from the consumer at any moment possible. And with that, I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again. And leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the subject. Bye-bye!